Chapter 7 discusses techniques that can be used to elicit participation from the public. First, we will discuss advisory groups, then appreciative inquiry, beneficiary assessments, and charrettes. Let's start with advisory groups. Next to public meetings, the public participation technique that is most often used in planning is a citizen advisory group. An advisory group is a small group of people, usually fewer than 20, presenting various interests, points of view, or fields of expertise. That is set up to advise an organization in its program or proposed actions. Some organizations use advisory groups as a primary mechanism for involving the public. Others use advisory groups under very specific circumstances as an um, adjunct to other kinds of public participation activities. Here are some examples from Salt Lake City. In chapter 12, we will take a closer look at these different advisory groups that are from human rights to um, bicycling in, in the city. Appreciative inquiry is one of several techniques described in this chapter. The other are uh, future search, open space, and charrette that are multi-day events, usually involving large numbers of people, designed to bring people together to agree on changes needed in an organization or in a community. The technique was created as part of the organization development field and designed to bring about a whole, whole systems um, change. A four-day design might have the following um, activities. Day one the, is discover and is the, to discover the organization's positive change um, core or what is possible within the organization. Day number two is to dream or envision potential for influ influence and impact. Day three is designing or build into the strategies, processes, and systems of the organization. But it doesn't have to be necessarily the organization. It could be also used for a site. Um, if you were going to do urban design or, or site planning. Day four, you might deliver actions. We will now watch a two-minute lecture by Thompson University faculty, Sharon Jones Eversley. She's in the Department of Family Studies, and she will explain to us what is appreciative inquiry. I'm Dr. Sharon Jones Eversley with the Family Studies and Community Development Department here at Towson University. Today I'm going to give you an overview of a theoretical framework that we use when we engage our students to work with families and communities. It's called appreciative inquiry. Many of you may not have heard of it, but it is an excellent way of blending practice, theory, and experiential learning, particularly in working with communities. There are four different phases to the appreciative inquiry. The first is that you have to discover. Second, you have to dream. Third is design, and the fourth is deliver. With this perfect blend of moving and engaging community residents and mobilizing residents to a plan or to change a practice or policy, we're looking at the discovery phase, the first phase. They're given an opportunity to be reflective of their past, not just looking at the problems of their past, but also looking at the strengths. And then after that reflection, they go to the phase of dreaming. This sounds elementary, but they use their imagination of what could be, what should be in their community. Thirdly, they go to the phase of design. They're coming with it with a real strong historical perspective, with creativity of what should be, and they design a plan to work for them to solve their challenges. And lastly, deliver. Deliver a process that's creative 
and that can actually be beneficial. Aristotle has a famous quote that says, to educate the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Appreciative Inquiry gives our students the tools that they need to engage in real-time learning with real people impacting real policy, real communities, and real practice. The Beneficiary Assessment, or BA for short, is an approach that is focused on gaining, gaining insights into community perspectives through interviews and group discussion level by working with uh, members of similar concerns or peers as uh, primary field researchers or people collecting the data in the form of interviews and also uh, focus groups or mass, uh, small discussions. Uh, project monitoring and evaluation uh, m most often focuses on the quantitative aspects of project delivery, yet what do uh, people on the receiving end um, of the project interventions, these are like the different stakeholders, what do they think about the intervention that was um, just made? And to give you an example, uh, intervention here, it would be something like having potable water in a village that there was not potable water. So we can ask in a survey what um, people think, but in beneficiary assessment, we're going to have more um, small group discussions or one-on-one -on -one interviews to find out um, the, if the beneficiary, in this case, the person in the village that just got potable water, um, if they have been using it or why or why not, or which challenges they have um, encountered, if they are satisfied with the results, and what you suggest um, if there was an intervention, for instance, in another similar village. So we know that hard facts and figures are important, meaning the quantitative data, but um, they are much more meaningful when you combine them to the qualitative and participatory assessments provided by the people who are most um, directly affected. So in beneficiary assessments, you will combine both quantitative and um, qualitative. This is a way that this approach is um, done. The term uh, beneficiary assessment, or BA, was coined in the 1980s to refer to uh, participatory projects assessments that were developed by the World Bank. Um, in different places um, in the world. Today, this terminology is somewhat outdated because the implication of beneficiaries or it's like also clients is not quite right um, because it might not be necessarily pass passive recipients of something. It could be that a village um, did restore a old building into a new school. Um, and they might do it themselves with the help of the World Bank. So it's not beneficiaries or clients, it's not like the right terminology um, because they are more active and they are really involved in the, in the project, making them really more of um, stakeholders or, or participants. So that would be more accurately. However, this um, term of like, uh, BA, it really, or beneficiary assessments, it really um, is stocked and it's a well accepted methodology um, today. Uh, now we will watch a beneficiary assessment um, project that it was, um, is called the Water Resources Management Program that it was done in, in Nepal. Oh, that's your name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gangkolu 